thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. For your grace and your mercy, I say thank you. For love and compassion, I say thank you. Father, I worship you. I bless your holy name. Thank you, Jesus, for all that you have done and continue to do. To you be all glory and honor and praise. Thank you, Master, because you are the God that can do what no man can do. You are the God of all flesh and there's nothing too hard for you. But I bless you. I thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Savior. I exalt your holy name. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Psalm 100 verse 4. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. Everybody shout, thank you, Jesus. Say resounding, thank you, Jesus. For those at home, shout a big hallelujah. Shout a wonderful hallelujah. I give you glory, Lord, as I honor you. I give you glory. I give you glory, Lord, as I honor
Shout a wonderful hallelujah. Receive my praise, O oh God. Receive my praise, O oh God. Blessings and honor.
least three people that got that COVID-19. At least three. But God has kept you. He has protected you. Do you know if you have the COVID-19? Because of the stress on the hospitals, they will send you back home. And said it's very severe. Don't think they will take care of you. Because what is going on now, everybody is stressed out. For God to keep you, shout a big hallelujah. For those that had it and they are healed, shout a wonderful hallelujah. Thanks, thanks. We give you thanks for all you have done. We are so blessed. We are so blessed. Our souls are found rest. So oh.
Father, from now on, I am kept by you. From now on, my wife is kept by you. From now on, my children are kept by you. From now on, my ministry is kept by you. From now on, my finances is kept by you. From now on, my marriage is kept by you. From now on, my schooling is kept by you. From now on, my future is kept by you. Father, in the name of Jesus, take it, Father, for me and do what no man can do. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Our final prayer, Psalm 105, verse 37. Psalm 105, verse 37. And said, Then he brought them out with silver and gold, and no one among their tribes faltered. See, when God transforms your life, there must be something to show that he has transformed your life. Let me tell you, brethren, one thing that a Christian has is proofs. The first time we were called Christians because of proofs in Antioch, there was proof that these people, there's something different about them. Let me tell you something. In your business, in your career, there will be something different about you. And God wants you to stand out in finances. We are going to pray and say, Father, from now on, everything of poverty, every evil poverty in my life, every lack, every debt, cancel now in Jesus' name. Father, I triumph over poverty in the name of Jesus. The silver and the gold is yours. From now on, I take that in Jesus' name. The cattle upon a thousand hill is yours. So that is my portion from now on in the name of Jesus. Father, everything connected to poverty in my lineage is cancelled. I live in abundance, begin to decree because your words carry power. I live in the overflow. From now on, my cup runneth over. My account runneth over. In the name of Jesus, I don't live from paycheck to paycheck again. I will not beg for bread. I will not be at the mercy of anyone again. In Jesus' name. From now on, I will serve you as I want to. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. We are going to pray one last prayer. Forgive me. There are some people, there are some things hanging around your life that should not be there. There are things, there are evil entities, there are, there are, there's a presence hanging around your life that should not be there. We are going to pray and say, Father. We are not saying with confusion. Say, Father. Say, Lord, Father. Every evil environment, every evil atmosphere, every demonic agent in my lineage, in my life, I plead the blood of Jesus. Every altar crying my name out. I plead the blood of Jesus. Every curse be cancelled now. In Jesus' name, pray that prayer with conviction. In the name of Jesus, every evil altar, every demonic presence, every evil atmosphere in my life, around me, inside of me, in my lineage, in my bloodline, I plead the blood of Jesus. I said, the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Play. The blood of Jesus my lineage. From now on, I receive freedom. I am clean because you have spoken that word unto me, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Savior. Thank you, Lord. Because you have done it. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We worship you. Thank you for doing what no man can do. First of all, we want to thank you because you are the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You are the Yahweh of Judah. You are the Ancient of Days. There is not to be compared to you. You are the mighty God. You are the everlasting Father. You are the God that can transform lives. I say thank you. At this assembly, we say thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for your glory. For lifting up our heads, we say thank you. Father, from now on, everything attached to poverty is cancelled. In our lives, we live in the overflow. Like Solomon, we throw gold and silver away. Like Solomon, we have great abundance of things for your kingdom. In the name of Jesus. From now on, watch from glory to glory. From honor to honor, from strength to strength, our strength will not be abated in Jesus' name. And from now on, every evil presence, every demonic presence that does not cause people to favor us, everything that causes men that should help us not to help us, every evil thing that flows down the bloodline, every curse, we plead the blood of Jesus. That blood that spills blood and blood of Abel, we plead that blood. And Father, as an entity over this church, we plead blood over the foundation of this church, over the future of this church. This assembly will march on and the gates of hell will not prevail. We receive the sword of the spirit right now, fighting every battle of our life. 
in the name of Jesus. From now on, Father, we have the victory. Everybody shout, I have the victory. Say, come I have the victory. Say, I have the victory. You can also be loud. I have the victory. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Our hymn is, there shall be showers of blessing. Oh, count your blessings, sir. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one.
opportunity we have to be alive. We give him praise in all things. I want you to know that you are not here by accident. And for those of us watching via the internet, I want you to know that God has a plan for your life this month. And the plan of God for you this month, it will come to pass in Jesus' name. God of heaven will come through for you in Jesus' name. And the name of the Lord will be magnified over your life in Jesus' name. Um, I want us to please bow down our heads as we pray this morning. And so, Father, Lord, we want to thank you. We bless your holy name. Thank you because you are the faithful God. None like you, O oh God. You said we should learn to count our blessings and to name them one by one. Lord, we thank you for blessing us. We thank you, Lord, for being there for us. We thank you, Lord, for fighting all our battles. We are grateful, Lord, because it has pleased you to keep us alive. Please accept our thanks in Jesus' name. This morning, Lord, as we share from your word, may this word do us good in Jesus' name. May your word translate into blessing in our lives in Jesus' name. Thank you, precious Father. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. This morning will be starting a series on the theme, Seek Ye First. Seek Ye First. And I will take a text from Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Matthew 6, verse 33. And it says, Matthew chapter, he said, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All these things shall be added unto you. The topic will be considered this morning is who is number one in your life? Who is number one in my life? I looked at that text in other version because I began to wonder what exactly is God saying to us today. In the New Living Translation, it says, seek the kingdom of God above all else. I looked at it again in the, what we call the Living Bible. It says, give him first place in your life. God's word says, but first, be concerned about his kingdom. Amplified says, but first and foremost, importantly, seek, aim at, strive after his kingdom. Again, the contemporary English Bible says, but more than anything else, put God work first and do what he wants. Put God's work first and do what he wants. I was praying about this topic and God brought me to the life of Abraham in Genesis chapter 22 verse 12. God began to query and question his place in the life of Abraham. And he was asking Abraham, do you love me more than the gift that I've given to you? Do you love me more than Isaac that you have waited for several years? 
And I went to John chapter 21 verse 15. John 21 verse 15. Look at what the Lord says there. He was asking Peter a very important question. He said, so, when he had died, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, lovest thou me more than this? He's asking him, do you love me more than this? Now, why would God be asking us that question? It means there could be some things in our life that is taking his place. And when you look at it, you and I know very well what those things could be. Uh, you don't need any preacher to tell you that. If you think deep, you know what exactly is it that is taking the place of God in my life. The Bible says, seek ye first. I remember very vividly when I first gave my life to Christ. And my father's friend came to the house. And when he was told how sold out I am, I mean, tell me to go to any other place but to go to a crusade, that is where you find me. And so, he was not happy. But thank God that by the time the result of whatever exams we did came, he saw that my even result was far, far better than the one that his own son had. But that is not where I'm going. By the time this man was about to die, he had to send his driver to come and pick me. Then I was already in college. That what this boy has, I think this is what I wanted. If you put God first, you find that there is nothing in your life that will be missing. You will never be stranded. You will never lack. Why? Because anyone who put God first will always have God as their backup and their support. I was looking at Deuteronomy 6 verse 5. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 5. Look at what the Lord said then. Then I was going to compare seek ye first and the kind of love we show to God. Look at what it says. He said, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all your heart and with all your soul and with what? So if that is what God is expecting, then what is left? It means my entire life must be what? But today, what do we find out? We find that people will say, no, that is to the extent to which you must serve God. If you are going too much, they will say, no, 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 no. Apply the brakes. No. God is saying, you must love the Lord with what? Your heart, with your soul, and with everything. So, seeking first the kingdom means loving God. Again, I look at Luke 14 verse 16. Luke 14 verse 16. Look at what the Bible says there. Luke 14 verse 16. It says, then said he unto him, a certain man made what? A great what? A great supper. Now, if you look at that story very well, he's just telling you nothing but your love for God is only what can, you can compare to how much you put him first. Now, what does it mean to seek? When we say seek, what does it mean? When we say seek, it means to look for. It means to search or inquire about. It means to investigate, pursue, and strive after. When I was growing up, I was told that minerals do not, you don't find minerals on the surface of the earth. Have you ever found silver on the surface of the earth? Have you ever found gold on the surface of the earth? Even crude oil. What are we told? They search. They dig. They explore as it were. And it is until they must have sought for those things. That is when they find them. What God is telling you and me today is that he must be first. He refuses to be second or third or last. 
The Bible says it is either he is first or he is nothing. Look at what the scripture says in Revelation chapter 1 verse 8. Because when we are talking about to seek first, it therefore means that God is number one. In Revelation chapter 1 verse 8, it says, I am what? The Alpha and Omega, beginning and the ending, said the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come. If again you look at that same Revelation chapter 4, verse 10 and 11, it tells you that God is the earliest in time, is the foremost even in importance. He says, the four and twenty elders, they did something. They bowed down before him. Him that sat upon the throne. And what were they doing? They were worshipping him that lived forever and ever and casting down what? They are crowns before the throne. Verse 11 is very instructive. Look at what it says there. It, it says, thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive what? Glory, honor, and power. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they were created. Now, what is that telling us? It means God must be first in everything. God must be first in our heart also. He refers, he refuses, just like I said, to be what? To be numbered second or the last. Now, I noticed one thing in the Bible that as long as God was number one in the life of Adam, how many of us remember Adam? As long as God is number one in his life, he enjoyed God's fellowship. God will come at the cool of the day and they will have a chat. As long as God was number one in the life of Solomon, he enjoyed God's fellowship. Even we were told that the queen of Sheba will come to ask for what? Wisdom. As long as God was number one in the life of King Uzziah, you find that in um, 2 Chronicles 26 verse 5. The Bible says he sought the Lord and God make him to become very relevant in life. But as soon as he put God on one side, something happened to him. My prayer for us is that we will learn to put God and make him number one in our lives in Jesus' name. The only reason why we are alive is because God has made us to be so. If God is not forced in our lives, then other things will be forced. You and I know what those things can be. For some of us, it will even be our children, as good as they may be. We have allowed them to take over everything over our lives. For some, it could be our career. For some, it could even be friends. Oh, you can't sleep, you can't wake up, except that friend comes to you. For some, it could even be anything you can imagine. It could be academics. It could be what? Academics. I know of people that look, they are workaholics. They will work and work and work and work. They don't care. But you are standing on a dangerous ground if God is not the first. I am standing on a dangerous ground if God is not the first. When he's not the first, that is when Satan would always sneak in as a thief and as an angel of life to deceive and make us careless in our work with the Lord. I want you to know that there is no substitute for making God number one. There is no what? No substitute for making God number one in our life. Adam, we were told, was the first creator of God. He lost his place because God's position in his life moved from being number one to something else. King Saul, we were told, was the king of Israel. He lost his kingdom simply because he refused to accept God as number one. And time will not permit me to tell you that Judas Iscariot 
one of the disciples equally did what? He lost his position when Jesus became number two in his heart. The other day I was reading 2 Chronicles 15, 2-4. 2 Chronicles 15, 2-4. 2 I realized that the call to seek God and make him number one is an urgent one. We live in a world where other things are taking the place of God in everybody's life. For some people, it could be food. Some, it could be game. The other night, I was talking to a friend. I said, what have you even been doing during this, uh, we call it lockdown, isn't it? Oh, he said, I have been watching Yoruba movie from one end to the other. I said, when, when did you sleep? Uh, he said, I, I slept around 6 a.m. this morning. I said, really? You see, I began to wonder that the effort we put into getting things from the world, if we put the same effort in seeking God, our lives can never be the same. I remember in those days when we were in college, we would read and read, and we have exams. You wanted to sleep, you wouldn't want, you wouldn't sleep. You put your legs where? Inside water. You put towel inside water and put it on your head. For those who know how to take what? Coffee. You carry it and drink it. Why? Because of a medal, a certificate. Isn't it? Now, watch people who went to school of nursing. Watch people who went to whatever degree or certification they did. The kind of effort they put into it to get that certification. Check their Christian life. If they put half of it, what God is telling you and me is that I must become what? Number one. When, I ref when you don't put me at number one, things will not add up. It's not a cause because God refuses to be number what? Number two. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. The only lasting happiness comes through Christ and without God's help in it, our lives, we, become, we can't become what he has ordained for us. You look at that second chronicles that I just mentioned. The Bible said something. They said, the Lord is with you. When what? Can we read it together? He said, the Lord is with you. When? Read it now. 15, verse 2. Second Chronicles 15, 2. He says, and he went out to meet Asa and said unto him, Hear ye me, Asa, all Judah and Benjamin, the Lord is with you. Why you? Did you see that? In other words, when he is number one, he will be what? With you. You will find him if you do what? If you seek him. That's the second thing. The third thing there is that if you don't seek him, the Bible says he will do what? He will forsake you if you forsake him. Hmm. This is very, very instructive. You see, many times our defeat in life comes because we do not deliberately make God number one. The defeat we face in life, whether in marital, whether in academic, whether at career or anywhere, is because we have relegated God to what? Number two. I was reading the Bible and Abraham, because he decided to put God to become number one in his life. You know what God did? He transformed an idol worshiper to become a worshiper of who? Jehovah. I look at the scripture. Moses, who was a murderer, running for his dear life. But when he now put God to become one, a murderer became who? A deliverer. I looked at Ruth. This was a lonely woman who lost her husband. But she decided that no, her God must be my God. You know what God did? He got married to a multimillionaire. I looked at it again. Rahab. Somebody who will have called a prostitute, isn't it? That goes about selling her body. But when she decided to make God number one, it was so instructive that <laughs> he became one of the descendants of our Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because she just felt, this God must be my God. And I looked at David. He was the ignored shepherd. 
the ignore shepherd boy who later became king. Why? Because in the secret, when no man was seeing him, we were told that he would always worship and praise God. And so when God was looking for a king, he knew where to go. Prophet Samuel said to the father, we will not sit until you go back to the bush and bring who? That one that God has already assigned. My prayer for you is that when God is looking for somebody to bless, it will be you in Jesus' name. Look at Zacchaeus. The Bible says he was a cheating crook who later became a generous giver. Why? Because God became what? Number one, he spoke to Jesus. He said, I know I'm a sinner. If by chance I must have taken what does not belong to me, restitution, I will give it back to that fellow. How many times? Four times. And God said, uh -uh, today, salvation has come into what? Into that house. My prayer for us is that we will make God number one in our lives in Jesus' name. I say we will make him number one in Jesus' name. In Revelation chapter 2, 1 to 7, is the story of the various churches in Revelation. And Christ was speaking to a particular one, which was the church in Ephesus. He rebuked the church in Ephesus for one thing. He said no matter how much he loved them. God is telling you and me that no matter how much he is loving me. He said they seem to love the Lord less and less. Therefore, God did something. He told them that if they do not look at what they are doing, that he will spew them out. He said they are neither cold nor hot. Their love is on something else. Something bigger. Something better. Is that not the same thing with us today? I remember when we look back, when we first gave and surrendered our life to Christ. There is nothing anybody will tell us. We will put our neck, we will put our leg, we will put everything because we love the Lord. And people around us, they truly know that we do what? We love God. But today, can people around me can members even of my own family know that in my heart I truly love God because they would it will see he said it will come out from the kind of things you do and your passion in life if all your passion is eat dress but you see when we get to heaven all these things they are very good but they are not the things that God is going to look at and so they were leaning. They were leaning on something, on things that will not satisfy. The Lord opened my eyes also to see some of the earthly props in our own lives too. Because whether we like it or not, this message is not just for you. It is equally for me that what are those earthly props? And you begin to wonder what am I talking about when I say earthly props? What are those things that I may be leaning on instead of Jesus. Because whether we like it or not, there are times in our lives that we lean on something else. There is a song writer who says, leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting life. Which time you don't lean on God, you don't lean on him, you must be leaning on what? Something else. For example, what are those things? It could be appetite for things of the world. It could maybe our career, just like I said, our work. We value it more than even the presence of God. I know in this country, I know we need to, to exist. I know we need to live. But where God becomes number two, because even in that place of work or your, that career, God expects you to carry who? Him into that place. So that when people see you, they will know truly that who? You are a child of God. For some of us, it could even be a peer approver. You need people to always approve you. And once you are not approved, there is a problem. You come into the room and somebody does not say, I like that edge here. Or I like that skin shoe. Or I like that thing. You don't feel what? Happy. You don't feel satisfied. Uh -uh. Your life must not be based on peer approval. Look, let me tell you, the same people who told Jesus that he is what? Hosanna. 
Hosanna is the one that comes what? The same people said, no, crucify him. He does not deserve to do what? So if your life, you are always depending on what people say, and that is what satisfies you, then you are leaning on what? On those things and not on Jesus. Look again. It could be even hobbies or recreation. I know some people, look, they don't play with recreation. For those of us who work in corporate America, you know, by Friday, uh, the real Americans, they are off. Either they are going for what? Fishing or golf or anything. Is that not true? You can't tell them any other thing. If they don't get to do that thing, no, they are not satisfied. So there are so many things we can look at. But what the Lord is telling is that I may allow my appetite, my ambition or conduct to be fashioned according to what is going on in the world. But God is saying, no. I must become what? Number one. May the Lord become number one in your life in Jesus' name. And for those of us who are students, let me tell you, if God truly really is number one, your academics will be very, very small. I gave my life to Christ when, not when I was an adult. I gave my life to Christ when I was a youth. And I knew what it means to enjoy the presence and the help of God, even in academics. So I know what I'm talking about. So how do I make God number one because of time? Number one, I must learn to seek him with all my heart. Deuteronomy 4.29. Deuteronomy 4.29. I must seek him with what? All my heart. Deuteronomy 4.29. Deuteronomy 4.29 says, But if from thence thou sh shalt do what? The Lord thy God, thou shalt find him, if thou shalt seek him with all your heart. How do I make God number one? Seek him with all my heart. Number two, seek him continually. Psalm 105 verse 4. Seek him continually. I don't seek him today and tomorrow because I had a bad dream. Or I woke up on the other side. I said, look, this is God. And I noticed many people, especially believers, when they just got the, what did you call it now? COVID-19, what did they call that thing? Money. <laughs> Stimulus. Oh, goodness. The hallelujah in the house is, is glorious. Is that not true? When they just got something, no, your life must not be leaning around the tips that God gives to Many of us, when that thing is not coming, then we say God is not good. No, God is good. All the time. Whether stimulus comes or not. So it must be a continual thing. Psalm 105 verse 4. Look at what it says. Psalm 105 verse 4. It says, seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face for what? Evermore. Number three, seek him daily. Daily. Proverbs 8.17. Proverbs 8.17. And Isaiah 58 verse 2. Proverbs 8.17 says, I love them. Can you hear what God is saying? I love them that does what? That love me. And they that seek me early. We do what? Go find me. And look at what Isaiah 58 verse 2 says. Isaiah 58. It says, Yet they seek me daily. May that be your portion. That yet the God will say on a daily basis, you are doing what? You are seeking me. And they know my ways as a nation. And number four, you toast, how do I do what? Make God number one. You must pay God first. What did I say? Many of us will pay God last. We take all the deductibles. You know, insurance, they will tell you, you have what? <laughs> uh, you are looking at me as if you don't understand what I'm saying. You have what? Deductibles. They will tell you before they give you anything, make sure that what? You pay the deductible. Many of us will pay all our deductible before we remember God. No. If I have a stipend or a salary, 
before I give out anything, I pick up my check. If I can't pick up my check, I wire the one that belongs to God. What? First. That is what it means to serve God. And for some of us that are youth, I understand some of you even got some money from government. Did you pay your tithe? Did you remember God? Or it was that thing you wanted to buy from the internet. You carry the money and you are buying. No. It means you are not making God what? Number one. So pay God what? First. When you pay your tithe, when you pay your first fruit, you are making God what? Number one. And again, I realize one thing that as you pay God first, he will open to you a new season of uncommon blessing. As you, you know, pay God first, he guarantees that all your needs will be met. He guarantees that devourers will never come towards you. That is what it means. Now, you can make God number one by engaging in kingdom investments. By engaging in kingdom investment. How much do you love God? Show me by what you do in the house of God. How much do you love God? How much do you make him number one? What can we look at in the house of God or in the kingdom of God and say, it is because I gave it to God. That is why that thing is existing. Look at what the Bible says in Luke chapter 7, 2 to 6. It was the story of the centurion. He proved his love. He proved that God was number one. One of his servants was sick. And he sent for the Lord Jesus Christ. That He sent one of the, the Jews, the elders, said, please, help me tell this man to come and do what? Heal my servant. And Jesus said, no, I'm not going to go. Because I was not sent to those people. I was only sent to who? To the Lordship of Israel. And he said, no, you can't do that to this man. Because he loved the Lord. And Christ was asking, how proof to me that he loved? He said, he built what? A synagogue. Many of us, have you ever, has it ever entered your heart that I can build a church for God? That I can build a church and hand it to God and say, God, I want people to be worshipping in this place. Kingdom investments. In that your village, where you went and built a 10 stories. Eh? It's good to build 10 stories in your village. But where is God in that thing? Where is the place where people could do what? Could worship God. How do I make God number one? Finally. Look at what Paul says in Romans 1.16. Romans 1.16. He says, I am not ashamed of the gospel. I am not what? Ashamed of the gospel. Preaching the word of God was his sole passion. He was not afraid to stand boldly to declare the truth. Do you know many of us in the church, yes, we know you to be a child of God. Yes, we know you to be a Christian. But the question is that in our marketplace, that fellow you normally patronize eh, to buy, what do you buy now? Eh? To buy all the necessary things you buy in the house. And you give them money. And each time you come, they say, Hey, customer. Is that not what they say? Customer. Do they even know that you have the Lord Jesus Christ? Have you ever voiced it out and said, Jesus loves you? In heaven, will it be said of you that because you spoke the word of God to those people, those people too can reign in eternity? In Mark 8, 38, listen to what Jesus Christ said. He said, those who are ashamed of me today and don't want to declare me to this particular generation. He said, on that day too, I may find myself becoming what? May the Lord not be ashamed of you and me in Jesus' name. So if God is not going to be ashamed of me and you, then we must make him what? Number one. Finally, what are the benefits? If I make God number one. What are the benefits? Number one, you will enjoy an all-round blessing. You will enjoy what? An all-round blessing. Over situations, over circumstances. The God will bring them under your control. Because I've never seen a man or a woman who makes God number one and is stranded in life. I have never. The Bible says that uh, the young lion do what? The lack. 
He said, but what? They that do what? They will never do what? They will never lack. The first thing is that you will enjoy all around. Look at the story of Joseph in Genesis 39 verse 3. He says, everything Joseph did, he prospered even though he was what? A slave. As a slave, every situation responded positively to his favor because God was what? Number one. Number one. Making God number one terminate shame in your life. Making God number one put an end to prolonged delay. He never thought that he would get out of that prison. But he kept on putting God what? Number one. And he came out of that prison. Number two. Connection to destiny helpers. Genesis 37, 25 to 36 says, Joseph, yes, truly was sold into slavery, but God connected him first to the house of Potiphar, then to the king's butler, and then the baker. He had favor with men, and later he became who? The prime minister. Why? Because God was what? Number one. Making God number one, and this is one thing I want you to understand, brings you out of the pit. Making God number one removes barrier of any kind in your life. Nothing will be able to stop you if God is what? Is number one. Number three, God's presence will be very visible for all to see if you make God what? Number one. Genesis 39 verse 3. God's presence will be very visible for all to see. Look at what Genesis 39 verse 3 says. I said the presence of God was with Joseph and even his master noticed it. Do you know that he, because of you in that place of work, they can begin to see a turnaround. Not because of anything, but because you carry the presence of God and because God is number one. I've seen people who were employed as MD or CEO that the company was running down. But because they were children of God, they took God into that company and they turned in what? They turned it around. And people began to wonder. There was a story of a young boy, an NPC of those days. He was at the refinery. And when he was employed, they brought him there. And they said, you that you always be speaking in tongues, you are an engineer. Look, there is a problem. Come and do what? Come and solve this thing. And truly, he didn't even know what to do. But he was speaking in tongues. And God told him, do this, do this, do this. Before you know it, what they thought he would never be able to do, he accomplished. They thought it was a coincidence. There was another problem. They brought him again. He didn't know what to do truly. But he did what? He prayed again because he made God what? Number one. Look at Joseph. Why was he able to become a prime minister? Is it because of what he knew how to do? No. God revealed things to him because in his presence, in the relationship they have, God opened his eyes and look, this is the problem that king was having. And when he got there, and when he spoke, they thought he was what? Another. Do you know that when your relationship with God is what it should be, and you make him number one, even people around you, they will know that indeed God is what? Is with you. So, the thing I want you to know is that God's presence will be what? It will be visible for all to see, just like they saw it in the life of Joseph. Therefore, making God number one prevents you from dying before your time. Because people thought that guy will rot in where? I'm sure when Potiphar threw him there, he said, you will do what? You will rot in that prison. But no, he didn't rot there. He didn't die before his time. Even his brothers, who meant evil, thought that what they did was what? Was complete. By the time they saw him, where they never expected, they knew truly, God is with who? This young man. Why? Because this young man decided to make God number one. You cannot make God number one and be stranded in life. I've always said that. If God is number one, you will always make it through in life. Number four, you become untouchable, which is the last one. You become what? Untouchable. Daniel 3, 24 to 26 says, Shadrach, Meshach, 
and Abednego exhibited this grace. They became untouchable because God was number one in their life. If you look at Acts chapter 12, it tells us about uh, what they meant to do to Peter. Put him in prison and they were going to forget him there. But the Bible told us that God overrules death sentence because he was to be taken out the next day to be slaughtered. But God did what? Overruled death sentence because he loved God and God was number one. Again, as long as God was, is number one in the life of King Saul, he fought against all his enemies and his enemies were defeated. But the day he turned his back, God too did what? God turned his back. I want you to know one thing that Isaiah 54 verse 17 says something. He said if you make him number one, he promised to neutralize any kind of weapon that has been manufactured against you. Whether they are spiritual, whether they are physical, whether they are psychological or intellectual. Because Job 5.12 says he disappoints the devices of the craft so that their hand cannot perform their enterprise. My prayer for us today is that we will learn to make God number one so that we can recover all that the enemy has stolen in our life. When we make him number one, our life will never remain the same. Jesus. And for those of us watching on the internet, I want you to know Jehovah himself is on the throne. He wants you to make him number one. Maybe you have not given your life to Christ. I want to plead with you that today, please, make him your Lord. Invite him. And for those of us who have even invited him, I want us to bow down our heads as we pray. Making God number one is very important. Have you left your first law, just like we saw in that Revelation chapter 3, chapter 2? Do you spend more time and effort on physical appearance than on cultivating an inner beauty? Is God number one in my life? Is God number one in your life? You can talk to others about children, marriage, weather, and news. But hardly will you talk to them about spiritual matters. Is God number one? Oh, even now you still enjoy secular songs, movies, and books. More than songs and reading material that points you to Christ. Is, still, is God still number one? I pray that God will open our eyes to this truth and our life will never remain the same in Jesus' name. So Father Lord, we want to thank you. Lord, we pray that you will please do something new in our life. Help us, Lord, to make you number one in every area of our lives. Lord, may we learn to see you as the only one who can turn situation around. May we lean on you. May we put our trust, our confidence in you. May our life bring pleasure to you. Lord, may you be the anchor of our hope even in the time of crisis in Jesus name we bless and we worship you blessed be your holy name in Jesus name we have prayed amen praise the lord mighty hand of God will be upon him afresh and anew. He has spoken to us, has poured the heart of God unto us. 
according to 1 Samuel chapter 3 verse 19 his words that he has spoken this morning will not fall to the ground it will bear root downward in our heart and bring forth fruit in the name of Jesus and the mighty God will make us a seeker of him seeker of righteousness in the name of Jesus thank you our father we bless your holy name in Jesus mighty name we have prayed brethren it's time to give our tithe unto God when you tithe your finances when you give your tithe to God your finances cannot be tight anymore God will remove the vara for your sake you know the truth is we live in an environment when it's difficult to give but when you are a child of God when you give God will surpass your understanding. You, will be, you cannot imagine it, what God will do for you. I'm a living testimony of what God can do in the life of a man in America. You are not working and you have the abundance of God when you put God first. Praise the Lord. So, please, I want us to give our tithe is just 10% of what you earn. And you know what I love about that uh, Malachi chapter 3? He said, and prove ye me. Give me your tithe and put me to proof. And just test me. And see what I will do in your life. So this morning, how many of us want to test God with our tithe? Put something in, your, in the envelope. Put your tithe in the envelope. Want to test God this morning. And say, God, this is what you have said. And like pastor was preaching, you got your stimulus and you have not paid tight. Just put something in the envelope for God. And prove God this morning. Do we have anybody in the house paying tight? Let's just stretch it to the let's just stretch forth our envelope and speak to God. Father, we we'll thank you. We give you praise. You are worthy. You are faithful, you are mighty, you are excellent, and you are a beautiful God. Father, your word cannot fail. As many that are giving you their tithe this morning, that they will ask in the name that is above all name, that you will make yourself known in their lives in the name of Jesus. You will rebuke the vara for their sakes in the name of Jesus. And Lord, you will open the windows of heaven, and you will pour them abundance that their room cannot contain in the name of Jesus. Thank you, our Father. We bless your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, our services remain the same. On Sunday, we are coming here at 10 o'clock. And the Lord bless you as you come. Ministers, we are praying on Wednesday. So, ministers, you can come in Wednesday. 7 to 10, 7 to 8, just for one hour to pray. Then, 7 to 8. Then on Friday, online prayer meeting. Everybody, all the members of the church. And it's been a beautiful experience. You can be part of it. Every Friday, 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. God bless you as you come. Brethren, you have reasons to thank God. Chant a big hallelujah. You have reasons to thank God. Chant a big hallelujah to the Almighty God. Eh? Amen. If you have a testimony, please can. Just come quickly. You have a testimony. I know everybody has a testimony, but you. Everybody, we are alive. We are aware. We want to give a testimony. To prove that God is good. God is real. Raise up your hand. Yes. Okay, my daddy. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Sometimes last year. Was it last year now? Yes. I ran a test. Yeah, was it last year? Yes, last year, maybe around March, I ran the test in Nigeria, my blood pressure, and it was about 
it was high. And, you know, I don't take drugs, so I was fitting it. I prayed and I just kept it somewhere. I didn't bother about myself. So when I came in here again, Somehow, somehow, I had a course again to go around, run another test. And this time I went, it was 150 something, something, something. It was high. And the doctor told me right there, he the, said, ah, you better see your doctor fast. There is a need for you to do something. I said, okay, thank you. And we got back home and I started praying. And I told God, it's not possible for me to serve you and be taking daily drugs. It's not possible. That is the simple truth. I don't know how you believe it. I still believe in divine healing. And we told God, and the thing I told God is, okay, God, what are we do? I don't know how much they sell whatever their drugs that they are selling for high blood pressure. But the truth is, every month, I've just given $50 for test given for my health. And sincerely speaking, for the past three months, when I went back to the doctor, perfect. You won't believe it. And that is what God, I'm sharing it just to encourage us. And that is what God can do for every one of us. It's just for us to take a bold step of faith. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Any other testimony? Any other testimony? Everybody is a testimony. Tell somebody I'm a living testimony. Amen. Because God has surpassed our expectations. We may have got ask ourselves today, why do I need to give times? About one minute or two. Why do I need to give times? The first thing I have here is the breath of life. Bible tells us Psalm 150, verse 6. He says, Let it's only the living that can give times. Those that have bread, let them give times. Psalm 150 verse 6. And because of his mercy, it's the mercy of God that kept off from all this coronavirus. But the Bible tells you, 20 to 23. 20 to 23. He says, of his mercy will not consume. Then you may say, ah, why do I need to give times? That Bible tells us Psalm 103 verse 3. He says, he healed all our diseases. So many a time, the enemy threw this arrow, death arrow, but God healed all our what? diseases and very importantly God has been our great provider the Bible tells the Philippians 419 he said but God must, will supply all our needs bread then God is our source the job you have is just a resource because the Bible tells the James 117 James 117 he said every good and perfect gift come from God God is the source the job you have is the resource. But we need to thank him for being our provider. Then finally, that we know that this month we shall eat a plenty and be satisfied. But the Bible tells the Joel 2.26, Joel 2.26, he said we shall eat in plenty and be, and my people shall never know put to shame. I want to just stand up as we want to dance now. And to give our thanksgiving. Begin. Raise up your thanksgiving and just prophesy to it. Thank you. Thank you. Then we are going to dance and drop it on the. Uh, there will be a basket here. Glory be to the Lord in the highest.
shall know no bounds in Jesus' name. We just want to pray for people whose birthdays uh, this month. You know, you are you were born in the month of May. Is there anybody here? You were born in the month of May. Would like to pray with you? Okay. Shall we pray? Our Father in heaven, we thank you. We bless your holy name. But thank you for this good month. The month of May is the number five month in the year. And five represent grace. Father, we pray for your children that this month your grace will be sufficient for them in Jesus' name. We pray for them that your hand will rest upon them for good in Jesus' name. Favor will be their portion in Jesus' name. We cancel every plan from the pit of hell and we pray, O oh God, that your mighty power will come through for them in Jesus' name. And Lord, we are asking for a birthday present. The Lord, you will bless them and you multiply unto them in Jesus' name. Their joy will always be full. And that day when you shall come, they will not be found wanting. Cause them, Lord, to reign with you. And we give you all the praise. Thank you, faithful Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. And before we share the grace, I'd just like to pray for each one of us. And I want to pray that this month will be a glorious month for you. A month of multiplication, a month of expansion, a month of success, a month of divine healing. It's a month where you will, know, you will not know any lack in Jesus' name. It's a month where you will experience season of peace and joy in the name of Jesus. I pray for you that you'll find grace and favor for help and progress in Jesus' name. This month, the Lord will wipe away every evil record of your past in Jesus' name. Spiritually and physically, you will break new grounds in Jesus' name. God will enthrone your king and cause your king to recognize you in Jesus' name. Your dream that has been stagnant, it will receive the life of God in Jesus' name. The work of your hand will prosper. I say the work of your hand will prosper. And this month, no weapon of the enemy formed against you will prosper in Jesus' name. And every tongue that rises up against you, they shall be condemned in Jesus' name. Again, I pray and declare, you will not die. I say you will not die. You will live to declare the glory of the Lord in the land of the living in Jesus' name. Your going out is blessed. Your coming in is blessed. Days of unfruitful labor are over in your life and family in Jesus' name. Your life will be a blessing. It will not be a curse. Your generation will celebrate you. And the name of the Lord will be glorified over your name. Great doors will open unto you. I say great doors will open unto you. And your appointment with sorrow and tragedy, <laughs> I curse and I destroy in Jesus' name. Thank you, faithful Father. Lord, we bless and worship you. In Jesus' name, we pray. And we share the grace and fellowship. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, his goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. Go and prosper.